Hi DIYers, this is Frank at Alarm Grid. We're back in the video lab working on our Encore Firefighter FF345. It's a audio device de designed to integrate your existing high voltage uh, 110 volt smoke detectors. Uh, so again, this is just a listening device, not an actual smoke detector, not designed for life safety, but is a great way to integrate uh, remote alerts via text and email using Total Connect, uh, as well as phone calls and dispatching the fire department for central station monitoring of your uh, existing high voltage interconnected smoke detectors. So uh, we're going to jump right into programming here. At the home screen, uh, this, the same rules will apply to the L5210, which is the smaller screen panel. Uh, same programming as that. We'll work on the bigger screen here just for video purposes. And this is the uh, FF345 here. Uh, now this device is seen by the Honeywell Lynx panels as basically a 5816, which is a door contact. Um, not that it is a door contact, but it's seen it, it programming wise is the same. It uses the same loop number, so it's going to use loop number two as if you were using a 5816 with a, with a magnet. Um, so that's how you would program this into the panel when this device is uh, triggered, in other words, when a smoke detector goes off and it's within three to six inches of this unit, it's going to trip, send loop two to the panel using the serial number on the unit, and then that will trigger a fire alarm on the panel uh, because we're gonna set it that way uh, on the system here. So let's go into security, more tools. We have our installer code on default, which is 4112. You may have it on something else. Just use that to get into programming here. Program, if you can't get into programming, you're not sure of your installer code, uh, you can reboot and get in the back door. We have a video um, getting, in ba getting back into programming on the L7000 or L5200 uh, on our channel as well. You can check that out if you need to. Uh, we'll hop right into zones and we'll take the, the first available new zone, highlight it, and then click edit. So the first thing we'll do is go into the serial number field. Now there's two ways to do this. Uh, you can either manually enter the serial number or you can, uh, which is listed right here in the back of the unit on a white sticker in very small letters, or you can learn it in. Uh, just so I can show you how to do it, we'll learn it in. So there's a little tab on the top of, on the top of this thing. Uh, you can even just use it with your finger when it's opened up. You'll see here, uh, there's the battery that we've already installed in the previous video. Uh, we ha also have this tamper switch here, and that's what, how we're going to learn in the, in the unit. So we can just hit clear to clear out any existing serial numbers there. Uh, we're going to press the tamper button. And you're going to hear a single beep. The second will trigger another beep. And you actually want to do a press and hold here. So pre we'll press and hold that second time. And you'll actually see it's, it came through as loop four. Now this is a common issue because we have the tamper cover off uh, and, and we're learning it in with the tamper button. Um, it's going to come through as loop four because that is the loop assigned to the tamper. Now, again, the smoke part of this, the, the, the transmission that's going to be sent when a smoke detector is triggered is loop two. So after we do this, we can press this one more time, press and hold, release it, and that'll lock it in. Sometimes you have to do a few clicks there if it doesn't catch it. Uh, and then we want to go right into the loop number and set this to two. Okay, that's a very important step if you auto enroll it. Um, if you manually enroll it, it's also an important step. You want to get it off of loop one over to loop two. Um, then we want to go into the zone description. We can label this, um, you know, uh, just uh, probably just main main smoke detectors. We can click done. The device type, we're going to put smoke detector. Okay. Now, when the panel reads out these zone names, it includes the device type. So you don't have to put smoke or heat or you know fire or anything in there. It already is going to read out smoke detector at the end as the suffix. So we can just put main smoke detector. Or if you have it in a specific room um, and you're just monitoring you know, one smoke detector, 
you can label that room here as well. Uh, the next thing is response type. So there's two different response types you can choose from, okay? Uh, it'll either be the fire, no verification, uh, which would be the first time it trips, it will immediately send that fire alarm to the panel and the siren will go off and will report to the central station. The other response type is fire with verification. This is a way that you can, number one, reduce false alarms. Number two, it's a way that if you had this, uh, you know, on an interconnected system that maybe had a smoke detector in the kitchen um, that frequently goes off from cooking or burning anything in the kitchen, maybe overdoing the toast or whatever it may be, um, this is a way that you can prevent the first trip of a smoke detector from sending a fire alarm. Uh, in this case, fire with verification, it verifies the first one by clearing it and waiting to see if smoke uh, is detected again. If it is, and this device is tripped again, then uh, it will go, it'll trip the second time, the fire alarm will go off, siren will go off locally, and the central station will be, uh, you know, will be notified. So usually I recommend fire no verification, um, but if you do have a smoke detector in the, near the kitchen or in an area where um, you commonly have false alarms, definitely set it to fire with verification. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave it on that for now. Uh, we have alarm report, yes. We always want to report things unless you just wanted to have a local fire alarm system and no reporting to the central station. Uh, maybe if you have, if you live in an area where your fire department um, you know, requires registration or licensing that you do not have, you may want to you know, turn that reporting off, but generally you want to leave that on so that we can notify the central station um, you know, if there's ever a fire alarm. So the last thing here is supervision. Supervision is something that you always want to do on, wire, on RF devices. It's a way for the system to know if, if the firefighter comes offline and is not communicating with the panel, then it's a way for the system to know, hey, you know, I don't see, I don't see this anymore. Uh, you know, what's going on? There's an issue here. Uh, so that that's always good to have as supervised. We would then save. We can back all the way out of programming. Always hit yes to allowing the installer back in, and then you can install this unit and test. Uh, the way you would do that is just press and hold the test button on your smokes, and you should get a fire alarm on the panel. After that, you would disarm. The first disarm is an alarm cancel and would send that to the central station, notifying them that it's not a real alarm. Uh, then you can hit the home key after that. You, there'll still be alarm mode after the first disarm. You can hit the home button and then enter your four digit code, uh, master user code generally, or any other sub users. And uh, that will clear out the system and set it back to ready to arm and have that green bar on the screen. So that's how you set up the Encore Firefighter FF345 uh, 110 volt smoke detector integration module. And if you have any other questions regarding this unit or any other smoke detectors uh, for the Honeywell Lynx panels, you can email us at support at alarmgrid.com and please subscribe to our channel.